John Schenk. I'm with Pelio and Associates. We're here at 1101 Space Park. We're looking at the first, one of the, one of the first just-in-time modular facilities uh, in Santa Clara, and uh, we welcome Rich Miller to our facility here. Well, it's great to be here. So, tell us a little bit about uh, the concept for the building. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's been described as, you know, container colo. Uh, in terms of the, the modular approach, what uh, led you down uh, this particular approach, and, and uh, uh, what's the plan for the site? You know, we really listen to what users have been telling us over, over really the last 10 years of, Pele of Peleon Associates developing data centers. They've been telling us that they want just in time, basically on-demand data center. They want customized reliability, and they don't necessarily want to be told a one-size-fits-all solution. They may want N, N plus one, 2N. Here you have a building that can have all of that in the same facility. They want energy efficiency to the best levels possible, and they want capital efficiency. They want to be able to purchase, acquire data center at the time they need it, when they need it, at the levels that they need it. And so that was where we started with looking at 1101 Space Park and bringing the modular just-in-time data center uh, to the data center community. So you're in an area of Santa Clara where there's you know any number of data centers. What are some of the, the advantages of the location and, and the attributes of the site? At 1101 Space Park, we're adjacent to a Silicon Valley power substation, and there's two additional substations right in the area. So you have an incredible access to, to highly reliable, uh, and well-priced power, probably the best combination in the state of California. You are in a facility that has access to virtually every carrier under the sun that you might need uh, out in the street, and we'll have dual entrances coming into the facility. And one unique aspect of 1101 Space Park is our cooling towers will be powered by recycled water. And the building itself and the, and the modular concept itself has been designed to, to potentially, uh, to hopefully achieve lead platinum. So in uh, a facility that's designed uh, to accommodate modular data centers, which can run some pretty high density installations, how do you have to think about the space and, and the infrastructure and, uh, and the power and cooling in, in ways that, that might differ from uh, a traditional raised floor data center of the, the, the same uh, size? You know, we're going to start with an evaporatively cooled solution, and because of the climate here in Santa Clara, you can get, there's very few hours in the year uh, where your uh, water inlet temperature won't produce a server air inlet temperature that is acceptable to manufacturer specifications. And so we, we wanted to start with a baseline of evaporative cooling and a baseline of generation and then layer on chillers as people need them. So as, as users desire a more and more dense solution, we can ratchet up the densities if they in fact need to add, add chilling onto their facility. But they don't necessarily have to have that in every portion of their data center. So we plan to really listen to what our customers need and then design a specific solution so that their server air inlet temperature is exactly what they need when they need it. So most of the, the uh, modular data centers we, we, we've seen thus far have been ones for large cloud-style providers with sort of a homogenous infrastructure um, and maybe deploying a, a central power spine, something like that. What's your approach to, to deploying the, the, the modular units? We think that modularity can be good for everyone from the wholesale type of end user all the way down to the retail type of end user. Um, so we've been looking at it from low loads all the way up to high loads. Um, essentially, that's what we've been looking at, at, at doing with, with our users. Okay, and in terms of uh, hookups and all, all of that, how, well, what, from what's your... From a hookup perspective, so we're, we're attempting to simplify how, how data centers are delivered, and we've, we have been working with um, very reputable contractors to deliver power, power connections at the level that the containers need them, the modules need them, uh, and cooling connectivity at the levels that are needed and sized appropriately for that amount of load. Therefore, you could be a more of a more of a big user and just get larger connections, perhaps, to your container in and of itself. Um, and it's not necessarily a solution for everybody, but we think it's one. It's, it's a concept that reaches a wide breadth of of users, all in the same facility. 
So in your discussions with, with prospects uh, about your facility, what are the kind of questions and, and conversations that you've been having? What are, what are the, um, the issues that seem to be you know, key decision points for companies that are considering uh, this approach? I think key decision points are, as a firm, how much critical load do I need? And how am I going to get the right size solution? And how am I going to get the right reliabilities for whatever my mission critical facility may be? And if you go to kind of a one size fits all solution, then you're going to get a specific type of redundancy to a specific type of cooling. And we have seen in, in potential users that, that we speak to that they might not necessarily fit into a one size fits all. They want choice in the matter, they want to be able to go N where they need it, they want UPS where they need it, they want chillers where they need it, but they don't want to necessarily design for the five nines for every single portion that they're developing. They may need, they may have a breadth of that. They may need two N on their mission critical, right. and then they may need N on a certain portion, and so we want to deliver that to them. Now, uh, many of the, the customers in, who are looking for data center space in the area might be familiar with you know, wholesale space or, or, or colo. Is there an education process or are most of them uh, familiar with the concepts uh, and uh, advantages and disadvantages of modular when they, when they walk in the door? What's that been like? The folks that we've talked to are very savvy, um, very savvy data center folks and I think they understand what the value that the data center brings to them. Um, and I think one thing that's important with this facility is that no one get, gets caught up in the container itself in, in that type of, it, it, they, need to, they need to really be looking at that it's a modular type of deployment and containers enable that modularity. And I think when we talk to users, they are so well versed in what they need and then when we give them our vision of what modularity means, just in time, customized reliability, capital efficiency, energy efficiency, the conversation becomes very smooth because they see that they can get what it is they've they, they've been telling us that they that they want. And obviously, you've got some of your first modules here, and including the, the PDI Icon unit uh, behind you. What's the the timetable for deployment, and uh, you know when uh, the space will be available for folks? We, we've completed our seismic upgrade, and as you can see, we have uh, showroom containers here. Our first four and a half megawatt feed is slated to be delivered in March. Uh, you will see outside that our 12 kV switchgear has been set, and our initial generator is in, and our first cooling tower will be here shortly. So the way we look at it is we're open for business for talking about the first, the first leases with people. Okay, listen, thanks uh, so much for taking a few minutes to, to tell us about your, your uh, project here. Great. Thank you, Rich. Thank you for coming and taking the time to uh, view the site.